Hello, and, and glad to be with you today as a, for another episode of A Line in the Sand, and we're talking to you from, from California in a beautiful studio in Duarte, California, as we're talking about the glory and what God is doing in this generation and time. Today we have our co-host, of course, um, Manuel Johnson, Pastor Manuel Johnson, and also Dr. Eli Elabadi, my friend. Eli and I go way, way back. It is an honor uh, to have you, oh, I'm Dave. So, I am so happy. Yes, and from Egypt, and we're going to be talking about the Bride of Christ today. Hallelujah. I'm going to open up just a little bit just to, to kind of whet your appetite uh, and to show you some things in the Scripture from the very beginning in the book of Genesis. You know that, that the book of Genesis begins with a bride. And, it, and the book of Revelation ends, ends with God. <laughs> and right in the middle is the exhortation <laughs> to husbands to love their wives even as Christ loved the church. And he says that this is a mystery that pertains to the bride of Christ. And so I'm just going to, to say just a few things to kind of whet your appetite as, as uh, Pastor Manuel and Ely uh, uh Give a little bit more about about uh, what what uh, about the bride, and uh, you know that that when God created man, He created him in the fullness of the image of God. But then God did something. He saw the that that, and He said something. He said that it's not good. For man Brandon. to live alone, mm -hmm. he needs a helpmate. And it says that he took a rib, he put, he caused a deep sleep to come on, on uh, Adam, okay. and then he pulled, and he took a rib out, and out of the rib he formed a woman. And uh, just to give you just a, a just a few ideas of some of the, of the expose that is being said there, it says that that uh, he took the rib out of Adam. And, you know, the, in the scriptures, uh, Pastor Manuel, it, it tells us that, that, a two, that, a two, that, a, that what two can do, but it says a threefold cord is not easily broken. That's true. But, it's talk, but I'm just talking about the two, when two, pe when two come together, and, and this expose is, is that, it says that that um, that for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife. Mm -hmm. And this word cleave is a story of Pastor Manuel. And in this story, when when a man is in covenant with a woman and they begin to come into et, into intimacy, the man is pulling back his rib. He's call, pull, pulling back his rib. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he's causing that rib to be one with him again. And it says that the two shall become one flesh. And it says that the desire of the woman will be towards her man or towards her husband. And here is another shadow of the church. And the beauty of the church and and the and the call of the bride and the call of mm, intimacy. Come on, come on. And and Jesus is calling a bride. The bride is not the servants, it's not the friends. They're friends of the of the husbandmen, but they're the friends of the of the bridegroom, but they're they're the bride are those that that are that come in a total intimate relationship into intimacy they're looking for they're so hungry for god that they don't they can't stand anything but god they're god is that god is their entire desire mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and jesus is the husband and he's waiting for his bride habibi yes. and that's the picture of the of the book of revelations mm -hmm. he's his the desire of the bride is is to her husband and the husband is pulling back his rib mm. and it's very interesting when you look in the in the septuagint 
you see that word only used once. And the same story is used again in, in the book of Corinthians, Pastor Manuel. Mm. And in this story, we see a picture of uh, Jesus, uh, of Jesus and, the, and the intimacy of the, even the uh, ministry of intercession in the church. And Paul, is, Paul says uh, in uh, second, uh, second, I believe it's 2 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, I, I wouldn't have you ignorant, brethren, of the, of the things that came against us in Asia, yeah. how we were pressed even to the point of death yeah. and even beyond. Uh, but you helping together by your prayers. This word helping is the word that we get helpmate from. It's the word for helpmate or, uh, or you helping is soon hupo ergo. And, it's the, and uh, even though the, the, uh, the scriptures are translated in the Hebrew in the, in the, in the earlier covenant, it's still, uh, tr that word is used in the Septuagint, soon hupo ergo. And soon is this word that we get uh, they, for Siamese tw twins. It's, it's a story of two being so closely attached that they're unmovable, they cannot be removed. Mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting that most Siamese twins are connected at the, on the side, though there are others, but here we see that the connection is so tight, and hupo means to be covered by. It's in the wedding, you remember they have a hooper, and the, and the bride and the groom, they go under the hooper. Mm -hmm. And ergo means to labor together. But it also shows productivity because Adam could only do so much. But a two, two together are greater in their ability to labor. Their, their, the benefits of their labor, the favor of their labor, the productivity of their labor is greater. And, and the two together is what causes the threefold cord. Wow. And, it, and that intimacy of conception is, is born in the labor of two. It's, and, and here we have the, the, the bride of conception. There was a conception that took place actually between Jesus and the Father in creation. That conception brought forth the, the universe. Mm. This, this conception brings forth an ecstasy. Have you ever heard that it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom? Yes. And well, that word, uh, sh there's more to that than we think because there's an ecstasy in that word pleasure. There's actually, God is in ecstasy when he gives us the pleasure, the kingdom. But it shows the it, but there shows that there's an interaction. Sometimes we don't understand. We just see one word, and we summarize that word without understanding the development of what that word took to be formed and to mean what it means. And it literally means that when when God we're in unity with God, there is a or with Jesus, that there's an intimacy that takes place and there's conception. And this conception brings forth the kingdom. There's, a, there's an interaction. It shows the bride and Jesus together in this interaction, bringing forth the kingdom. Everything is born in the kingdom. And, and God wants us to be producers of the kingdom. He wants us to learn to have and to do what Jesus did. Jesus said, I don't do anything unless I see my father doing it first. And in order to have that kind of relationship, you have to live in intimacy. You have to have an intimate relationship with someone. A lot of people do a lot of things, but they don't have productivity. There's no productivity because they're working out of their desire, rather their than what Jesus is saying. I, ju I just want to give just one more illustration of where we see this. It's very interesting that when Jesus 
uh, when I believe it's Matthew and, and 16, and, uh, and the, and the uh, disciples and Jesus are at Caesarea Philippi. And, he's, and he gets alone by himself, and they're, they're, uh, they're not on the Galilee, they're on the Mediterranean. And, and, uh, and Jesus says to them, who do, the, who do, pe who do people say that yeah, I am? Mm -hmm. And then some said, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're one of the prophets. Some say you're Elijah. And, and Jesus listened to them, but he was after a response from them. Mm -hmm. And in that response, he says, but who do you say that I am? And there was a quiet, except for one Peter. man. man. And, that, and it shows something about that one man, that because there was a closeness between John <laughs> and Jesus, but it shows that there was a closeness between Peter and the Father. There was something going on that was, beyond, that was not happening among mm. the other disciples. Mm. Mm. Yes. And, and he says, and he says to Jesus, he says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Hmm. That was the response that Jesus was looking for. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and he said, and, and Jesus' response to him was, you are. was you're blessed because, bec uh, Peter, because flesh and blood hasn't mm -hmm. revealed this to mm. you. The Father has revealed this to you, and mm. and he's there's something that's going on there because because he's referring that there that Peter has an ear to hear. Maybe Peter's going to mess up. He's going to mess up a lot, but he had some kind of relationship going with the Father that the rest of the disciples didn't have. And, and, and so Jesus says this. He says, blessed are you, Simon mm -hmm. Barjona. He said, blessed mm -hmm. are you. Mm -hmm. He says, and I also bless you. Because you know why? Because Jesus, in his intimacy with the Father, mm -hmm. always saw what he saw the Father doing. So he saw Peter's response. He saw that this intimacy was going on. Yes. And so he blessed what the Father blessed. And he says, I also bless you. And, and Simon, I'm going to change your name right now. Your mm. name isn't no longer going to be called. He said that to Abraham. Abraham had an intimate relationship right. with, with Jehovah, Yah, Yahweh, Je Jehovah God. And he says, he says to uh, Peter, your name is no longer be Simon Barjona. It's going to be Peter. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. You know that a lot of people say that he wasn't referring to Peter, but he was no. referring to Peter. See, Peter had an intimacy with the Father that the other disciples didn't have. And, and he was telling Peter that there was, and the other disciples, that this is what the Father's looking for. Mm -hmm. People that can hear him and have intimacy with him. And then he goes on to you, and he's on to him, and he says, Peter, I'm not only going to change your name, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. He didn't say he was giving them the keys right then. He says, I'm going to give you the keys. And he says, he said, whatever you bind Binds, on earth it will, be, will bind. be bound in heaven, yeah. and whatever you loose, loose in heaven loose in earth will earth. be loosed. He didn't, you know, it's not talking about earth there. There's no word of earth. We find the reference of earth in Matthew chapter 18 when about the keys, and those are different kinds of keys. But this type of keys is, pertains to the court of heaven. It pertains to, for, to taking things to heaven and having authority in heaven to bind and to loose. And, where, and he said that that authority is going to be given to... Is, going to be the fruit of the church, but it the model of that is going to come through a man named Peter who has a lot of other faults, 
a lot of shortcomings, but what he has is very important. He has an intimate relationship with the Father. And that's what Jesus was after because he had an intimate with relationship with the Father because the revelations of heaven were not going to come through the understanding of men. Definitely. They were going to come through people empowered by the Holy Ghost, empowered to do the justice of heaven, to come before the court of heaven and call things down from heaven to the earth. Peter was the one man that could walk and even his shadow had power to heal. Matthew, um, I'm sorry, Pastor Manuel and Ely, I no, opened no, no, it no, up. No, 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 we are enjoying it. We're that. still talking about God, the bride, God. but I'm releasing it to you. Go ahead. Well, you know, as you were speaking, um, Pastor David, you, you know, about the bride, and it, and it also you marinated it in, in, into that oneness with uh, the Lord. Uh, we see that type and shadow of it in the book of Genesis with um, uh, 24, with Abraham finding a, um, a bride for his son Isaac. Son Isaac yeah. And we see that where it was, when we see that whole scenario of how he sent Eliezer, his top ser servant, mm -hmm. to go find this bride, we see that type of Christ. We see that type of uh, uh, a bride there, and it comes together. And you can see, and, and I'm, Rebecca is not forced. Mm -mm. Not for us at all, mm -hmm. you see, but she hears everything about Abraham. She hears everything about Isaac, but yet hasn't really seen them. He hears everything about how he's been, he's wealthy and he's got all of this, but she has not seen any of it. Only a diary was given to her, some rings, some necklace, you know, earrings, nose rings, a few gifts for the family. But yet by faith, because this, whole, this thing could have been a hoax. Yeah, exactly. But by faith, <laughs> she says, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And you see how she comes. And like by us, by faith, we believe and we know that we are the bride of Christ. And, Jesus, and some of us haven't seen, oh, directly Jesus in this total farm. Some of us haven't seen heaven. But we know it. We know it's there for us, mm. and I love it. And Rebecca goes, and even by faith she becomes one in her belief that all that was spoken to her by her, it's by by this servant Eliezer, is all going to be. It's going to happen. <laughs> and she leaves her family, never sees them again. Mm -hmm. She leaves her family, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the decision has to be made made overnight. She didn't know this. You know, Elias said, we got to go. We can't stay here 10 days. You know, it's got to be made over, you know. And she tells her family, I will go with this man. And we see as she goes, she meets this person for the very first time. And the thing about it is, what I love about it, like, it has a type and shadow because you couldn't get there overnight. By camel, according to the biblical history, it took over a month to get there. So, I mean, and that's, they're traveling through the desert. So there's, you know, you're going to, you know, I'm sure weather issues, all these conditions. And she finally gets there. But think about it. Because she really didn't have a place to clean up, she cops off her camel, <laughs> puts a bell on her face. <laughs> and Isaac has seen this person. The fittest love. That, you know, and he's been riding a camel for six, seven weeks, bumpity bumpity bump, in the desert. So she's not looking the best, you know, we don't know that, but it's show, and she hops off, puts a veil on her face, and, and, and so Isaac is like a type and shadow of Jesus. He sees us, and, you know, and that's how Jesus said he accepts us as we are. Yeah. He accepts us as, isn't this wonderful? He accepts us as we are, and, and, and we feel broken. We feel we're not up to the part to meet this beautiful, handsome princess, this king. Habibi. But Jesus, uh, Isaac looks at Rebecca and immediately takes her in into his tent. And, wow. that, and, God's, and they become one. They become one. And we see that union that takes place and how God brings it together. You know, and this is, I mean, there's different parts in the Bible. Jesus also talks about the wedding feast and everything. But I wanted to talk about 
Genesis uh, 24 because I think it was very significant on what you were saying. And Jesus, you know, Isaac sees more of Rebecca. Isaac was ready. Isaac was, you know, looking good. He was waiting. But once and again, we, we jump off of our combo and we see the Lord and, we, and, and we're going to be one with the Lord. And the Bible talks about the wedding feast. It talks about us celebrating it talks about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob being there. It talks about a great time with the Lord. We haven't seen anything yet. And, you know, as you have spoken about the rib, Eli. I have, I have something, really. I, I know you do, I, but let me finish. Okay, quickly. As you <laughs> no, no, no. i got to be led by the Spirit. Okay, amen. As, as David was talking about the rib, and, you know, I really believe when Jesus was, you know, a type in the shadow was, you know, speared by the side. Mm. You know, he was, his side was, was wounded. His side was wounded. Mm. And God took a rib from Adam's side mm -hmm. and he healed and he yes. wounded. It's like us. We're going to be on the side, you know, it's like we're, we're that rib. We're that rib, that bride. You know, Manuel, what we don't what we don't understand is that Jesus was created in the form of Adam. Yes. He's still missing that rib. Mm. He's waiting to pull that rib exactly back to himself. That's that, oh, that is so true. In, Isn't in, that in, hot? In, go ahead, in, keep in, going. So Eli, go go ahead and close us out with something. What I'm what I want to say, the love is real. Is real something really wonderful? When when Isaac loved. To make it marry quickly, yeah. he, he 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 doesn't want to marry just have to have a girl. Yeah. But he wants to give. He wants to give himself to this girl. Yes. That's why the Lord Jesus wants to give us, not to take from us. He wants to give us. That's why he wants us to empty ourselves from everything and because he wants to give us we are his bride bride, so bride the word that he for gave. The, yes he wants to give us isaac when he saw rebecca coming what happened he wants to give her he wants to share with her all his wealth all his life not to take from her but just to give and this is what the lord jesus yeah. and the heavenly father yes for god so loved the world so he gave us his beloved son yes. to die for our sins, to give us, to give us the eternal. I, I, I don't respect any, any marriage the husband wants to take, just to take. Right. And now, many people, what get I going to gain from that? Mm. It is not gain. But we need to know that our father wants to give us. Lord Jesus Come on. came especially for you. He loved you and he knows you by your, your name. He knows the situation where you are. He knows all the difficulties you are going through. Mm. And he loves you so much. And he wants to interfere in your problem. If you give him his peace, if you call him and tell him, Lord Jesus, please come. I need you. I need you. I am lonely, Lord. I need you. You are the only one. Please come in. Show me your kindness, Lord. Show me your love, please. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to receive you in my heart. Not, not, not to take from me, but to take from you. I need you, Daddy. To be my Daddy. To be my best friend. Please come in. If you pray with me this prayer, trust the Lord is, heal, is hearing you. Jesus came specially for his bride, and he's going to take us one day on the cloud. We're going we gonna to go in the rapture. Mm. It is very close. It is very close. It is not days. It is hours. I believe it. I smell it. I feel it. The Lord is coming very soon. Mm. Please come and accept Jesus. I cannot promise he's going to get you out of all your problems. 
but he will be with you in all your problems. This is what I believe. And he said, I am with you forever. Give your life to Christ. Submit yourself. Be subject to him. Because he died for you and he came to give you eternal life. Pray with me quickly this prayer before we close. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. To die for me on the cross. For dying for me, Lord. I accept that, Lord. I accept, I accept him, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Forgive me my forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. Wash me by your precious blood. Wash me by your precious blood. Write my name in the book of the Lamb. Write my name in the book. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. See you next week.